What if I told you you could build a budget gaming PC for £450 that actually performs pretty insane? Well in this video that's exactly what we've done. We've built an all AMD budget gaming PC for under £450 and in this video you're going to watch us build it and benchmark it in some games and I'll give you guys my recommendations on how you can replicate this build and possibly make it even cheaper without sacrificing performance. To kick things off, the motherboard we're using is the Gigabyte A520M S2H which we actually picked up in a clearance on a company called CCL Computers which is a UK retailer. And this was a B grade item that came in at £45 and it says on the box about motherboard repaired. Now of course the A520 boards are not the best but at £45 and in what looks like a new condition this is a very good deal. And we will be pairing it with the Ryzen 5 5600 which I only paid £55 on AliExpress for but that was quite a while ago but you can still find them for anywhere between £65 and £75. And for the memory we went with the Juho DDR4 3200MHz 16GB kit. Now I've had this kit for a while and I'm just using old parts but in the future I will plan to use 32GB kits for most builds except ultra budget ones. And to cool our CPU we're using a budget thermal right cooler that we paid about £15 on Amazon for. And honestly it actually performs really good so I do recommend it. I will leave a link to that in the description. And for storage we went with this Oroco Gem 3 SSD from Amazon and I picked two of these up for $41.99 and that's a pretty good deal regardless of whether it's Gem 3 or 4 if you can get drives or 1TB M.2s for around £40 that's always a good place to start. And for the case which is an AliExpress exclusive this is the Dark Flash I think it's a 275p I will pull it on screen anyway, but I paid about £41 for this case, but we also had to add three ARGB fans, which brought the price to around £55 for the case and the fans. And for our power supply, we are using the Vida Lite 650 watt white unit. Now I've used these before and they are very cheap and they don't feel premium or anything like that. But they do work and I've had no issues with them so I will continue using them unless I do run into issues with them. And last but not least for our graphics card we're using the power color fighter rx 6600 which i actually bought new and you might be wondering why are you using a brand new graphics card in a pc flip well quite simply i bought this graphics card earlier this year and i had the intentions of just doing benchmarks on it and seeing how well it actually performed for a low price but that left me with two options when i wanted to get rid of it either sell it on ebay and probably lose 50 to 60 pound or put it in a gaming PC and that way I won't actually lose money on it. And for once I actually made the cable management look good so that was the bonus. But overall the build turned out amazing and I think it looks really good as well. But now for the main thing, gaming. How well does it actually perform in some games? Let's go and test that out for ourselves. So we didn't get to test as many games as we would have liked to, however we did test Fortnite, GTA 5, Forza, Cyberpunk, Black Ops 6 and Marvel Rivals. And honestly it performed great in all of them. I did also try Monster Hunter Wilds but I could not get above 60 FPS in the benchmark. Well I could in the cutscenes but in the actual gameplay even with FSR and a medium preset I was hovering around 50 FPS so maybe you'd have to drop settings all the way to low 
and maybe turn off some additional settings. But in Fortnite, we were playing on performance mode at 1080p, and overall it was a very smooth and enjoyable experience, averaging over 200 FPS. But Fortnite is quite an easy to run game anyway, so it's to be expected from this machine. Next for GTA 5. This run absolutely great as well. We played on the very high preset I believe and honestly it was very smooth. Our 1% lows were great as well and there was no stutters or anything like that. This is the GTA 5 Enhanced Edition so it will perform better overall on all machines as far as I am aware. But overall GTA 5 was also a very enjoyable experience. And the same to be said about Forza Horizon 5. It is getting on a bit now this game, it isn't really a newly released game, but it can be quite demanding. I tried on the highest preset available, but it did warn me about limited um, VRAM, so we had to drop it down to I believe a very high preset. But we were still seeing very good frame rates, and even 1% lows as well. And even games like Black Ops 6, we actually played with FSR on and on a balanced preset, and we were getting much higher FPS than I was expecting. Of course, you'd get a little bit lower without upscaling, but I did actually try it myself, and the FPS difference wasn't much, so that's actually good to know that we can play this game at native on a balanced preset, and it has still performed really well. And the thing is, with a lot of games, and people don't always use presets, they will mix and match settings, maybe they have high textures or view distance, and turn off some silly effects that the game has down on low, just to maximise their frame rate while keeping the clarity of the game really good. But overall, in all the games we tested, it really did just perform absolutely fine. Like I said, Monster Hunter Wilds was the only exception to this, but I didn't really mess around too much with settings, as I didn't really have a lot of time before releasing this video. But overall, my verdict is, for £450, this is actually a pretty decent PC. Now, I was thinking about it yesterday, and I realised that actually most of the parts from this are new. The only exception to this is basically like the motherboard, and even the graphics card, because technically I bought it and used it for a few months. Everything is in a like new condition, and honestly, the PC looks amazing as well. And I think even though we spent a bit of extra money because it, we're using a new graphics card, we will still be able to make a decent profit on this. And my other recommendations if you want to replicate this build is either go on eBay and look for an RX 6600 which can be found around £140. Or if you want to stick with AMD you can get a 5700 XT. I think if you spent a little bit more than 200 you could get something like a 6700 XT. All your other options are things like 2070 Super, 3060, 3060 Ti, and if you're lucky, you may be able to find a 3070 on eBay or on a local deal, which is going to provide you with a lot of performance and a lot of value with that as well. But overall, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think of this PC, and let me know what graphics card do you have. Are you team red or are you team green? Do you have an NVIDIA graphics card? on AMD graphics card in your rig. Let me know in the comments. Anyway, I hope you all have a good day and I'll see you all soon.